Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 10D of Useful Genetics, where we're continuing our discussion of aneuploidy by now considering the risk factors. We'll start by talking about how oocytes and eggs develop in um, female mammals, especially people, and the effects of parental age, maternal age, on the incidence of Down syndrome. And we'll then consider the role of crossing over in aneuploidy. So, Myotic errors that create aneuploidies arise more often in the mother than the father if they're autosomal aneuploidies, and the frequency increases with maternal age. The reason for this is the prolonged meiotic arrest in females that happens from before birth to when the oocyte matures, um, and this can be as much as 50 years later. We discussed this briefly in Module 7 when we talked about meiosis. Um, here's a little more detail. In the um, developing fetus, the cells that are set aside as the germline divide and divide many times, generating about 7 million cells that are called primary oocytes. Those are cells that are ready to undergo meiosis. So that's 7 million. It's a lot more than we're going to need. That's it. They're present at about 20 weeks of gestation. And then those cells begin meiosis. A lot of them fall by the wayside, but when the baby is born, there are about 1 to 2 million of these primary oocytes left. And they're all arrested in meiosis 1 at metaphase. That's the stage when the homologous chromosomes are paired together, um, held together by the synaptonemal complex, and are lined up with the spindle fibers at the center of the cell, the place called the metaphase plate. These cells, these one to two million cells, then stay in the middle of this very complicated and delicate cell division for a very long time. They remain all, none of them goes through meiosis until puberty starts. And then most of the time, in most women, one oocyte per month is activated and continues meiosis one and then meiosis two to produce an ovum that can be fertilized. So that's one oocyte per month over a period of about 35 years of fertility for the woman. The rest of the oocytes um, generally die. They're not used at all. So this is a very long time for a single cell division to be held in, in stasis, waiting its turn. And it's during this time that things go wrong. Now, here is a micrograph of the chromosomes in a human oocyte, um, one of the, an oocyte that's arrested in meiosis one. And each of these red lines that you see is in fact two homologous chromosomes synapsed. So there's two sister chromatids of one homolog, and I'm drawing them as one line because you can't really distinguish them, and then two sister chromatids of the other homolog. And I'm drawing them far enough apart that you can see that they're a distinct chromatid, a, a distinct pair of chromatids. But in the micrograph, in most places, you can't see that. They're so closely pressed together that it just looks like one red line. But each of the arrows marks a position where you don't just see one red line. Instead, you see a blip where the two pairs of homologs are not tightly aligned. They're not tightly synapsed. And sometimes these are in the middle of a chromosome. Sometimes they're at the end of the chromosome. So the arrows point to positions like this. These are places where meiosis is going wrong. And you can see there are a lot of them. And if they're not too big, well, maybe, maybe the meiosis will make it okay. 
but if there's very many of them, then there can be problems with segregation. So we can look at the consequences of this in the frequency of aneuploid gametes produced by the mother, aneuploid ova. And that's illustrated here by a graph showing the risk of Down syndrome, the frequency of Down syndrome, as a function of the mother's age. And this is not a linear graph, but look at the numbers, and you'll see that for young mothers, mothers below 30 or 35 years old, the risk of Down syndrome is only about 1 in 2,000. It's very low. But that after age 35, the risk of Down syndrome goes up. This suggests that actually those arrested meiotic chromosomes are hanging together pretty well for the first 30 or 35 years. But finally, the, the stresses wear them down and they start to really make mistakes. So that the risk of Down syndrome rises to 1 in 30 or even 1 in 25 for mothers who are more than 45 years old. Now the next graph um, puts this risk in the context of when women are reproducing. And these are somewhat old data. Um, the blue lines are, so first we'll look at the graph on the left. And this is all births, not just Down syndrome births. This is all the pregnancies for women. Um, and it shows the changes in age at reproduction, how how old women are or have, when they're having their babies. So in the period 1989 to 1991, women had most of their babies when they were in their 20s. Some women when they were very young, some women when they were older, but most women had their babies in the 20s. This is a time when the risk of Down syndrome is quite low. But nevertheless, those women still did have babies with Down syndrome because there were a lot of women in this age. But if we look at the distribution of Down syndrome's birth as a function of maternal age, we see it doesn't mirror the shape of the graph of the ages of women who were having babies. Instead, it shifted way over because these older mothers are disproportionately having babies with Down syndrome. If we think about the, how things have changed since 1989, we can look at the graph of women, nat, women in 2005 to 2007. That's the white bars. And you can see that whereas the blue bars are shaped like that, the white bars are shifted. Fewer women are having babies in their 20s more women are having babies in their 30s and their 40s. And we see a corresponding shift in the both the incidence of Down syndrome and the ages. Whereas before, the ages of women having Down syndrome babies were quite spread out, um, much broader than the distribution of women having babies, but still quite, you know, well spread out. Now, there are more Down syndrome babies being born because more older women, these women, are having babies. And they're giving rise to this higher incidence of Down syndrome babies. Now, this data is all in the absence of um, prenatal diagnosis and subsequent termination. So this is these are what you would see if there were no if women were not having abortions as when they discover that they're carrying a Down syndrome baby, but many women do. So that would change the actual numbers of births. Now there's one more risk factor for aneuploidy that I should mention because it's going to come up in the next couple of lectures, and that is failure of the chromosomes to cross over in meiosis. You'll remember that when we talked about meiosis, we talked about how an important function of crossing over isn't just to make new combinations of genes, it's to tie the chromosomes together because this chromatid has been broken and rejoined to a chromatin in the, chromatid in the other homolog. Similarly here, 
this chromatid has been re has been broken and rejoined to this chromatid. And this covalent linkage across the homologs ties the homologs together and is not released until the loops of cohesin that are holding the sister chromatids together let go um, late in meiosis one. So if there isn't a crossover, there's nothing to hold these chromosomes together when cohesin, um, nothing to hold these chromosomes together when they're being pulled on by the spindle fibers. And they will just come apart and they will not segregate correctly. They'll just sort of float around at random and half the time they'll end up in the wrong cells. It's more likely that there won't be a crossover in short chromosomes because short chromosomes typically have fewer crossovers than long chromosomes, although they usually have at least one. But if they don't have at least one, they're at high risk of segregating wrongly into the wrong daughter cells. And this may explain why the frequency of trisomies for chromosomes, small chromosomes, such as chromosome 21, are higher than the frequency of trisomies for large chromosomes. This is in pregnancies before birth. So we've talked about human oocyte development, about how incredibly long it is that the human oocytes have to stay in meiosis before they can complete meiosis and produce a gamete. And we talked about how this leads to an increased risk of aneuploid gametes in older mothers, which is seen for Down syndrome as a sharp risk, sharp rise in incidence after age 35. And we also considered how chromosomes that fail to cross over can also give rise to aneuploid gametes. Coming up next, we're going to think about the sex chromosome aneuploidies. They're treated separately because they're special in several different ways. We'll discuss them in the next two lectures. I hope to see you there.